Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. Got Stacy with me. Shalom. And in today's class, we're going to be talking about the reason for atonement. Okay. There's a lot of people asking questions about the Day of Atonement. They're asking what we're supposed to be doing and all of this kind of stuff. And we're planning on putting a class out on whether or not we should be fasting and all this stuff related to Atonement Day. Um, but in this class, we wanted to address one comment, and it was whether or not we should be doing Atonement Day at all. Okay. The person said, uh, why are we doing atonement day when the Messiah atoned for my sins? Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And I went in and I tried to do a search. And the only verse that I could find where you have Jesus and atonement in the same verse is in Romans chapter five, verse 11. Okay. So, and this is Paul, of course. Right. And he's talking about the Messiah making atonement for our sins. Okay. Now, this, of course, was a little bit disturbing because the Messiah didn't actually make atonement for our sins. Yeah, a lot of people um, believe that he did. But when you come in and you actually look up the definition of atonement, you see that another man can't do an atonement for you. Right. Atonement means like reparations or payment for a thing that we've done wrong. Mm -hmm. So how can I pay for something that you've done wrong? Yeah, when someone comes in and make um, reparations for something that you've done, majority of the time they get the reward. Um, the reward you know, does the not benefits. necessary, mm -hmm. yeah, and the benefits doesn't go to you. Yeah, like for instance, if you um, steal something. Mm -hmm. And I come in and to make peace, I go ahead and pay for the thing that you've stolen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's kind of seems like I've covered you, but I really ain't. Right. You are actually now going to have to pay double mm -hmm. because you have to pay back the person you stole from and you have to pay me back. Right. So mm -hmm. I've, in, I've essentially did you more harm than good. Mm -hmm. I should have just let you catch that butt whooping you was going to get for stealing it in the first place. Then you would have been reconciled and you would have paid your reparations everything would have been good yeah well i believe you know we live in a society where um you know we're used to people doing the work for us and you know that's not necessarily how it is and how it should be you know if you go in and you know take stealing for instance you go into walmart and you steal a pokemon card and instead of you going to jail or getting you know embarrassed or you know uh, Walmart calling the, the cops on you, your mom go in there secretly and say, well, you know, I'll, I'll pay this for him. And, yeah. and, and maybe you know, even give yeah. him some little extra extra. Yeah. And you no longer have to face the consequence for it. But, 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 but that's not how it is. Yeah. You ain't going to end up having to pay for it. But all, well, we're not going to sit here and just jack our jaws all day. We're actually going to come in and we're going to look at some verses. And those verses are going to be coming out of the third testament of the Bible. We're going to be looking in chapter 42, which is on guilt and penitence, trials and suffering. Mm -hmm. You remember we did a class on this entire chapter. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, we um, spent a lot of time in this chapter um, talking about this guilt and penitence. Um, but this one here, we really want to just concentrate on this part where it says the need for repentance and atonement. Okay. So we're just going to cover this section here. Okay. And then we're going to go back over there and see what Paul was really talking about in Romans. Okay. All right. So we will let, let you read verse one. And many times I permit you to drain the same cup that I gave to your brethren. It is because there are some who only in this way realize the wrong they caused and by experiencing the same ordeal which they caused to others, they will become aware of the pain they provoked. This will give light to their spirit and bring understanding, repentance, and therefore fulfillment of my law. This is the third testament of the Bible, guys. This is the spirit and truth that we was provided. This book has a wealth of information that, you know, up until this point, we really didn't understand. Yeah, and if the third testament can't bring it home then you know it ain't coming home ain't coming yeah home, this is right. this is the book this book is actually necessary to understand the old testament and the new testament um and even this part we're going to see what the messiah was was saying when he said to judge not yes ye be judged right mm -hmm. that's actually what it's talking about here yeah it's, it's hinting on that here a little bit but it's talking about how when we do cast this judgment on a person then the same thing happens to us mm -hmm. and i'm starting to notice this in my personal life more and more here recently it's like every time i say something to somebody i find myself doing the exact same thing okay that i have 
you know, talk to them about doing. Mm -hmm. Even my children. I, I'm like, I can't even chastise my children anymore. <laughs> or yes, we about, or yet we're about to find out that I do the same thing. That, that happens to me often. Yeah. You know? Well, one example that I can give is that, um, you know, we always telling the kids to put the tools up. Yeah. You know, put exactly. your tools up. Don't leave them out in the rain mm -hmm. and things like that. Mm -hmm. But Five I've noticed later. that when I go and I stress and emphasize them the importance of leaving the tools, putting the tools up. Five minutes later, I've left one out. You too. left one out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's a great example. What it's saying is by putting someone through this, whatever it is, we actually get to suffer the same thing that they are going through. Yeah, because, you know, when we go and we say, listen, honey, you mm -hmm. have to do the tools like this. No, we don't do that. We say, listen, put this tool up. You mm -hmm. know, I'm tired of telling you the same thing. So we're <laughs> actually um, maybe embarrassing yeah, putting them hurting, through a little mm -hmm. stress hurting them mm -hmm. in a way that where we're actually not trying to do it but we want to want them to know i mean it yes yeah, so. and according to this verse five minutes later they're going to be sitting over there looking at you and left that tool on the ground <laughs> right <laughs> yep all right let's go on to verse two but if you wish to pass through the pain without draining the cup of bitterness you may do so by paying your debt with repentance good works and all that your conscience tells you that you must do in this way, you pay a debt of love and return and honor. A life or the peace, health and joy are the bread that you may have stolen from your brothers. So this right here, there's a lot going on in this verse talking about this cup of bitterness. Mm -hmm. We learn about this cup of bitterness in the Third Testament. Mm -hmm. You know, we associate this with carrying our cross. Mm -hmm. You know, all of us have a cross to bear. Um, so this is kind of like the same thing. But what it does tell us that we can... Um, I guess pay for mm -hmm. or have uh, our cup of bitterness covered mm -hmm. um, by doing certain things. Yeah, you can make this reparation like it said before and it's going to say it again. There's two ways in order to reconcile. There's two ways to make atonement. One is through pain. The other is through love. Those mm -hmm. are the choices. It's mm -hmm. going to tell us here. And so what it's saying here is that if we don't want the pain that we have caused our brothers up there in verse one to be put on us and we experience the same thing is saying in verse two we could do these other things like you're talking about like what repentance yeah that's mm -hmm. what atonement day is all about mm -hmm. you know being repentant of the things that we have done those are the 10 days of awe is all about repenting but then it goes on to say good works yeah good works yeah those are charitable deeds you read about that like in isaiah chapter 58 when you're reading about a, a what a true fast is mm -hmm. we talked about how we're going to give a class on the true fast um on what or what it means to afflict your soul correctly we find that in isaiah chapter 58 and it talks about charitable deeds and doing good works right mm -hmm. and then notice it says that about your conscience too yeah it says all that your conscience tells tell you that you must do yeah so we have to listen to our conscience and obey our conscience mm -hmm. and all of this is kind of directing us around you know and according to what we're reading here it's helping us make atonement yeah so it's necessarily for us to um um, listen to it. Right. Mm -hmm. It kind of reminded me of another thing where the scripture says that um, um, if you um, blaspheme the Holy Spirit, you won't be forgiven. Right. Well, so this Holy Spirit that he's talking about, we hear it through this conscience, through mm -hmm. the voice of this conscience. So when your conscience is telling you to go over and make these reparations or to do this thing that will give you atonement, you can't be... Um, you can't reject it. You can't... And you definitely can't blaspheme it and, you know... Yeah, like when your conscience is telling you to go over there and say, I'm sorry. You're sorry, and yeah. you take a stubborn heart and say, I ain't doing that. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's happened to me many times. I ain't doing that. Yeah. And you end up, like you said, having to, because you're going to have to go through one of them, you end up now you having to go through the pain. Yeah, now you're about mm -hmm. to smash your finger in the door. So. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One way or the other, you're going to get atoned. And, and it says, by doing this, we can atone for our sins. And escape the pain. Yeah. So, like you said, you got the choice. Pain or love. Some people like pain. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You don't really have to worry about it. Just kind of wait for it to hit you, you know. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Verse three. Observe how different is the reality of my justice from the ideal that you have formed of your father. Yeah. So, this is talking about the whole hell thing. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, that's what it's referring to. How we've always been taught that... 
we're gonna you're gonna go to hell mm-hmm. meaning that there was nothing you can do about it mm-hmm. you know we they they tell us about our wrong deeds or tell us that we're doing something wrong um maybe not giving us as much detail as we need to make those corrections but we do know we're doing something wrong and then they tell us we're going to go to hell for it right but mm-hmm. then what they don't tell us is that in the middle we do have an opportunity to correct yeah. and reconcile and make atonement that's what atonement day is all about mm-hmm. is making atonement so we don't have to go to quote hell right right mm-hmm. we can escape and we're learning here in this section how we can escape hell yes how is it that we can escape hell Verse 2 says, by doing good works, paying a debt of repentance, and by doing what your conscience tells you that you must do. Yeah. So this is an important part that we're not being taught mm-hmm. that by doing these acts, we can make up for everything that we've done. Yeah. Even the stuff we don't remember. Yeah. I think it's wonderful that the Father gives us a leeway that we don't have to do the thing, do the action, and then go straight to hell. Now you have mm-hmm. a chance to, to make, make a correction, it. yeah, mm-hmm. so that you don't end up in quote hell. Because a lot of times we didn't know we were doing wrong. Mm-mm. The scripture talks about unintentional sins. And right. of course, it talks about that when it's talking about the days of all there in the book of Gad the Seer. And it talks about during this time, this period when we have a chance to make reconciliation for our faults, it talks about those who are committing unintentional sins. Well, that's a lot of us. Mm-hmm. You know, we only just found out that a sin is the transgression of a law. Yeah, we were thinking, I think it was just something, anything that we did bad. Yeah. And so we was leaving man up to be the judge on what was good and what was bad. Oh, wow. That's yeah. good. Yeah. When you learned that it was the transgression of the law, mm-hmm. now you're allowing the covenant to decide what's good or what's bad. And like I said, we just learned this. So for a long time, we were committing some of these unintentional sins. I like that what you just said. When we were sinning before, you know, we had that definition of anything that you think that I was doing wrong. We did allow man to decide what a sin was and not necessarily allow the father. But yeah. now that you have the correct meaning, you know, that is, is the disobedience of the it's laws the law and the instructions the of the father. Now he makes the decision as to if you sin or not. Because a lot of times people think, you know, at one time we were told if you smoke a cigarette, yeah, there is a sin. Mm-hmm. You know, it's bad for your health, yeah, but it's not a sin not according a sin. to the Father. According to the church, it might be, mm-hmm. but that does not necessarily mean that it's well, true. Well, according to the church, wearing short dresses might be a sin. Oh. Or, not, or, or not even having the sleeves long enough might be a sin. Hey, according to this church that... I was a member of it one time. If you don't wear pantyhose, that's With a sin. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Wears, and so, yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and so we were allowing man to make up our sins for us. And by doing so, we didn't know what the true sins were. We were actually committing real sins, mm-hmm. only paying attention to these ones that were made up. So now that we realized we were doing things wrong. Now we got to reconcile. Now we got to make up for it. Now we got to try to do right now that we understand the truth. Well, like you said, our father in his infinite wisdom has given us time to make these corrections and changes. And what's so good about it, and then we're going to go on, is that they, man, was the ones who told us what our reconciliation was yeah. you know you had to do this no you can't do this you got to go yeah. and get on your knees in front of the altar <laughs> confess in front of the church tell them you know you got pregnant out of wedlock and let them decide if you want to uh continue going to this church or not you know so all they, that kind of difference so. so they made up the sin and then they made up the method for reconciliation yes. and mm-hmm. it's surprising that it all supported them and what they were doing huh <laughs> yeah. anyway let's go Number four, do not forget that if I have come to tell you that none of you will be lost, it is also true that I have said that every debt must be settled and every fault erased from the book of life. It is up to you to choose the path to me. Free will is still yours. See, now it's talking about this book of life here. You know what the book of life is? Uh, It's that big book. That big book that carries (laughs) all of our sins in it. This actually has three parts to it. There's um, the book of uh, the righteous. These are people who have understood what the law is and have been doing their best to um, obey the law, of course, with the help of the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Um, And then you have 
the ones that are committing the unintentional sins, they're in this book of life too. And then you have the wicked that are part of this book of life. This book is in three parts. Now, the the ones in the middle are the group that we fit in. Like I said, these ones who are committing unintentional sins, we're given a chance in order to reconcile um, and, uh, and, and have atonement so that we can get like the ones that are doing the righteous deeds. Right. Else, if we don't, we'll be counted with those who are committing the wicked deeds. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, when the prophetic fulfillment of atonement day comes, then we'll get caught up in that. Mm -hmm. And like we said, that's the pain part. You know, it's going to be painful during that day. Right. We're given a chance to make reconciliation on our own before the day of atonement or the day of the Lord, I should call it. But those of us who fail to make the proper reconciliation for our past sins will be the victims of the day of the Lord. Right. Mm -hmm. So, and so I, and I, I keep, I'm saying this to bring our attention back to the choice that we have. We can make the choice of reconciling through love now, but if we choose not to, if, if we can wait on the day of the Lord and wait for the pain part. Right. But either way, like it says here, nobody will be lost. Right. Everybody will make atonement. Period. Mm -hmm. Everybody. Yeah. This is important to the understanding because, you know, there's, you know, people, you know, they want to say it's the Jews that's going to get atonement or it's the Gentiles that's going to get atonement or it's, you know, all they, everybody with me is going to go through the day of the Lord. No, everybody is going to. Mm -hmm. reconcile yeah the, the the only thing we can do is try to get ahead of the punishment and that's by committing acts of love and charity mm -hmm. repentance and doing good works and right. such mm -hmm. that's how we erase those stains out of the book of life yeah so that when these books are open like you read about in the book of revelation when these books are open then we're standing with the good guys yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. number five if you prefer the law of retaliation of ancient times, as is still practiced by men from their proud nations, behold, it results. So, it's talking about an eye for an eye, two for two. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we think that that's the only real way to pay for our crimes is if we, you know, put people in jail or kill them or whatever we do for their crimes. Right. Then mm -hmm. it says, look at the results. Yeah. Has it paid off? Not at all. You know, it seemed like if it had worked, we wouldn't have so many prisons nowadays. You know, but, you know, from what I understand, we're still in a state of over prison overcrowding or something like that. Yeah, they're still building more. Yeah. And I think at one time they ran out of the um, chemicals that they were using when they execute people. Mm -hmm. So it's not really working. Nope, I mean, it's all. actually getting worse. Mm -hmm. and, it, and when you look at the other people, the rest of the people of humanity, you see that they're not getting any better either. Nope. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Verse 6. If you want the measure with which you judge your brother also used against you, do not even wait for your entry into the other existence to receive my justice. For here, when you least expect it, you will find yourself in the same difficulty in which you place your fellow men. So, like I said, judge not and ye be not judged. Right. For what judgment you judge, you shall be judged. Yeah. And even other stuff, when we do... Not just judgment, we can cause pain, you know, in other ways, too. Mm -hmm. But what it's saying here is that, OK, instead of you making reconciliation for your own faults, if you want to actually feel the pain here, just keep on. Keep yeah. on messing with people. Keep on judging them. Keep on harming them. Keep on doing it and thinking you're going to get away with it. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. you said, the, the day of the Lord is coming and there is a certain amount of people that are slated for that. Day. And, you know, so what it's telling us here is, you know, if we want to go through that, you know, here's the path. We're, yeah. we're given a choice. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the beauty of this thing is that we're given a choice. And, you know, I think all we really try to do here is let people know that you have a choice. Yeah. You know? A lot of people. Well, I didn't know I had a choice. Yeah. Um, but if not for well, the Third Testament to um, to let us know that we do have a choice you know we would i would definitely still be thinking that you know my bad was done away with with the messiah going to the cross oh i was i thought you was going to take another uh, path when you say you didn't have a choice i was going to ask you so when you committed this crime you know all of those years ago that thing that you remember doing what do you now do about it do you now just suffering you know woe is me i'm going to have to you know 
pay for this thing. But you, you actually say, no, you, you wasn't worried about it because you thought the Messiah did away with it for you. Yeah, well, I you thought that. You forgot about it. <laughs> I thought that if I just asked for forgiveness, then I was forgiven and I ain't have to worry about it no more. <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's strange because, you know, we can... We could actually, you know, think about the criminal here. So we got this person, and let me just make something up. We're going to go down to this jailhouse, and I'm gonna, we're going to have this ministry where we're going to be talking to these prisoners here in this jail. Mm -hmm. But you got this one prisoner here in this jail who is hearing this message, thinking how he's going to get out next week. And he, the message that he gets out of that is, dang it, I forgot to ask for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Not that I stole the thing, not that I robbed <laughs> the people. He realizes that his error was that he didn't ask for forgiveness. He, if he had asked for forgiveness, he probably wouldn't be in jail right now. Yeah, or 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 he might be in jail, but, you know, what really mattered was, you know, Jesus. Jesus, you can count it against me, but Jesus done forgave yeah, me. Yeah, so, 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 yeah, it don't matter, you know. Yeah. I, I may have murdered somebody, but I'm still going to heaven, and I don't really care what y'all think. Yeah, those, uh, people think. That. They do think that, you know, mm -hmm. um, and that's praise the Lord for, you know, the scripture that actually clarifies this because this is not the case. You know, we're learning here and, you know, it says that in the Old Testament and the New Testament, too, you, we can't just sin. Mm -mm. You know, we have to make a payment for the things, the wrongs that we've done. Mm hmm. Because you think about it, if that weren't the case, why would he tell us about sin in the first place? If the Messiah was just going to wipe them away, why would we even need to know? Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, why? I'm just so we can know what to ask for forgiveness for. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Anyway, let's go on. Number seven. But if you want a more elevated law to come to your aid, not only to spare you from suffering, which is what you fear most, but also to inspire in your noble thoughts and good sentiments. Pray, call me, and proceed along your path to struggle to be better each time, to be stronger in your ordeals, or in short, to settle with love the debt that you have with your father and with your fellow men. Now, this verse has a lot to say. Yeah. But there's one particular part in here that's really working with me these days. Okay. And, and that's that part where he says, if you want to do better, to pray. Mm. You know, yeah, of course, we all want to do better. Right. But me, I thought it was kind of up to me. To do better. Oh, you know? okay. And this one verse is, this is just one verse. There's many others that say the same thing. Um, what is, I think, um, especially up in chapter 60, when it's talking about how it is that the ministers are supposed to carry themselves, mm -hmm. it tells us that when we want to do better, when we see we have a fault in our life, like me, I still struggle with patience a little bit. Mm -hmm. So when I see myself struggling with patience, instead of trying to fix it myself, what this is telling us is to call on him right. and ask him to help us. Okay. Mm -hmm. One thing that um, comes out for me is it says to settle the debt with love that you have with your, your, with your father and with your fellow men. And sometimes, you know, like say for instance that I um, do something that, you know, maybe hurt the, ch the children's uh, feelings or something like that. At that time, you should try to settle, it, settle that debt with love. You know, mm -hmm. don't just sit there and say, uh, well, I'm the mom and, and they should have known better or whatever. Mm, they um, feel supposed to get hurt. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you got to lay some kind of authority down or whatever. Settle it with love instead of um, just sitting there stewing about it. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that, that comes out to me. And it's talking about this elevated law. But if you want a more elevated law to come to your aid. So this is all saying the same thing. Mm -hmm. Just repeating the same thing over and over. Pain. Or love, mm -hmm. you know, so the elevated law part would be the love part, mm -hmm. you know, if you want the elevated, but if you don't, if you don't care about the elevated love, you can have this other law, which is going to be pain. Yeah. Suffering. And he says, of course, you know, we're all scared of suffering. We yeah. all don't want the suffering part. So, you know, choose the law. It's up to us. But what's odd is, is that scared as we are about having to <laughs> go through something, ma the majority of us here now are ensuring that we will actually go through that thing. Yeah, that's kind of weird. You know, I got this one family member who refuses to hear anything scriptural because they say that they don't want to hear about their own death. Mm. But it's like, okay, if you are rejecting the word of God and you are rejecting the things that is supposed to help you not die, aren't you ensuring that you're going to die? Yeah, because it's, now you don't know. Yeah, it's like the person who has cancer. I mean, you got cancer anyway. 
you can hear hear about what it is you can do about it or something like that but you don't want to hear nothing about you know your cancer or anything so essentially you're going to die from cancer yeah you don't want to talk about it you don't want to talk about it right mm -hmm. well like i said if you want this elevated law part you probably need to talk about it <laughs> Well, here's a very key verse to this video. I actually almost did the entire video on this one verse right here. Okay. Because this is what points to the question when a person says, well, why do I need to make atonement when Jesus made atonement for me? Okay. Yeah. When the Messiah made atonement, why, why should I have to do that? Mm -hmm. Read verse 8. Someone usually asks me, Master, if you forgive our faults, why do you allow us to cleanse them through suffering? So now here we go. Mm -hmm. This is what that person was asking. Mm -hmm. Almost, almost exactly word for word. Mm -hmm. If the Messiah atoned for my sins, why do I need to think about atonement? Then? Right. Mm -hmm. To this I answer, I forgive you, but it is necessary for you to correct those faults in order for you to give back to your spirit its purity. So you've been forgiven. But you still got to make it up. Yeah. The example I made up, the example I like to use is how you have these individuals warring over this bicycle. I often say this. You have one person, I use the name Bobby, who has stolen Albert's bike. Okay. He's taken Albert's bike and now we are standing before the judge. And Bobby has the bike there and Albert is crying because Bobby has the bike. Mm -hmm. But now Bobby seeing himself threatened immediately says i'm sorry for stealing the bike mm -hmm. but what happens next do they all leave the room bobby walks out with the bike <laughs> and albert walks out crying and everybody's fine now because bobby said i'm sorry that's not fair that's not fair and it's not reality right the judge is going to make him give the bike back mm -hmm. so he's been forgiven you know, we may not put him in prison. We may not cut his hand off for the stuff he's just done because mm -hmm. he's, he said he's sorry. But he does have to give the bike back. Yeah. So this is what this verse is saying. Even though you have been forgiven of the fault, you still got to make it up. Yeah. That kid is still over there crying. Mm -hmm. Whatever whatever damage that you have done has to now be undone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's going to have to get undone. Just saying I'm sorry is just not going to get it. I mean, you you teach that to like a five-year-old and he does wrong all day and he says, I apologize. Mm -hmm. My little nephew said, I apologize. I apologize. <laughs> you know, that, that was that was the only word he knew how to say was, I apologize. Right. You know, it took us five minutes to say to understand that this kid is saying, I apologize. Mm -hmm. But five minutes later, he's doing the exact same thing again. Yeah, and he's he apologizing again. Mm -hmm. Well, no. You can't just iodize your way out of it. You actually going to have to get this whooping yeah. to make you stop doing this thing. Yeah. And it says that so that your spirit is purified, mm -hmm. you know, your spirit man has to be kept cleansed. Yeah. And in order for him to be cleansed, you have to make that reconciliation. Every fault that you've ever done is a stain on your spirit, whether right. you know it or not. Even down to the thoughts, mm -hmm. every deed, every thought, everything that you've ever done in your entire existence yeah. mm -hmm. is a stain on your spirit. And like I was saying earlier, some of this stuff you even forgot. Yeah. You don't remember doing it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and other times the person you have acted upon or, or been treacherous towards may not even be available for you to mm -hmm. apologize to. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, they may be deceased or they may be gone on and you can't reach them. But yet this stain remains on your spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, are you going to try to hunt them down? You know, kind of look them up in the yellow pages and find them so you can try <laughs> to make up for the thing that you've done. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember one time I borrowed my uncle's chessboard and I lost it. But, you know, he's passed on now. So what do I do? Right. You know, do I just forget about it? He's dead now. I ain't got to worry about him in his chessboard. No. So you're saying that stain is still there. That on stain your is still there. Yeah. You know, and how do you get rid of it? Right. Do you go give a chessboard to somebody else? How do you get rid of it? Like, like you said, um, repentance, good works, and uh, let your conscience uh, and listen to you your conscience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, will make up for that. Even mm -hmm. though he's gone, the chessboard's gone, everything. I don't, might not even remember, but by doing these good works, mm -hmm. I can make up for stuff that you know I don't I otherwise wouldn't even remember. Yeah, the things are so awesome. You know, the Third Testament tells us that um, the Father is going to one day, you know, require of us and say, 
you know, when I gave you this spirit, I gave it to you pure and clean and you bought it back to me, nasty, dirty, stained, weakened. And so this is one way by doing atonement that you can cleanse your spirit and yeah. present it, present your spirit back to the father clean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you got to do this. You got to choose this love part. Another example, you know, I was thinking of with my, that same uncle was how my son broke his glasses. You remember that? Hmm. Yeah. And he was about five years old and he snapped his glasses in half. I do remember sitting there looking at these glasses thinking, how was I going to repair these glasses? And I couldn't. <laughs> I right. couldn't, I'm sitting, and at the end of the day, I'm like, he gonna have to buy him a new pair of glasses. <laughs> I can't, get, and I'm sitting here looking at him like, he can't really afford this pair of glasses. Right. I can't afford them. He can't afford them. So what happened? He ain't got no glasses now. So now. And so this child has broken these glasses, but I guarantee you, if you call him in here now, he won't even remember. Right. Mm -hmm. And he's caused this man all of this pain having to deal without his glasses. But he don't even remember that. That's a stain on his spirit. Mm -hmm. He's caused this hardship. Like I said earlier, he's caused this hardship. So if he doesn't learn how to reconcile for what he's done, now his glasses got to get broke. So you just can't say, uh, so our child, our son just can't say, well, I don't Jesus, remember. I Jesus just, forgave me. Oh, for yeah. It. Yeah, no. Yeah. I don't no. have to worry about it. Well, you know, he's still left with no glasses. Mm -hmm. And you're saying that Jesus then forgave you yeah. for it. So you, you done know. blew it off. You yeah. mm -hmm. took the haughty, arrogant mode. Like, Jesus, get away with my thing. I ain't got to yeah. worry about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then when, even when you get a few hundred dollars in your pocket, right. you can now take that hundred dollars and do what you want. Right. You know, and not worry about him and his glasses. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These things have to be, they have to be removed. Right. All right, let's go. Number nine. I have told you that every last stain shall be cleansed from the hearts of men. Yet I tell you also that it will be each one of you who must cleanse himself of his own stains. So we have to do it ourselves. Yep. Like I tried to fix my uncle's glasses. You, you know, later on after I did get some money, I could have came back and you know bought him some new glasses. Mm -hmm. But what they got to do with the child that broke these glasses? Right. You know, he's got to make up. His own thing. Yeah. Even though he don't remember. Okay. Well, let me ask you this. Now, if you would have took that child aside and gave him a good spanking. Oh, yeah. Because he had not been playing with the glasses yeah. anyway. Would that have atoned for? Absolutely. That's why the Bible tells you to spank your child. You save them from going to hell. Mm. You remember that part? Yes. It mm -hmm. says when you whoop your child, you actually keep them out of hell. Mm -hmm. So think about that in light of this. Mm -hmm. You know, he... He has this stain on his spirit now mm, oh, that he's been lived, that he's got to live with until he makes reconciliation. I could have helped him out in that moment by, like you said, taking my belt off and, you know. So that parent who allowed their child to, to who went with the uh, manager at Walmart and said, well, let me just pay you for it. Mm -hmm. She would have done the child a better benefit if she would have allowed him to get just in a little bit of trouble. Would yeah. allow him to be a little bit of fear. Yeah, just mm -hmm. go over there and let the let the manager chew him out. Whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. make him go back there and wash dishes. He yeah. got to make reconciliation. Mm -hmm. But I think your point is is that she saved him from that. Right. And it's according to the way we understand the scripture, she has put that child a little bit closer to hell. Right. Mm hmm mm hmm Well they say spare spare the rod, spoil the child. Yes. Mm-hmm. Remember that I have told you, with the measure you use, you shall be measured, and with whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. Yeah, everything we did, we got to come sow that child who broke them glasses. Like we said, he got to get his glasses broke. Mm -hmm. Or it may not come in the form of glasses, but, you know, it's going to be something. Well, if it's the child that I think I remember breaking them, uh, he like broke his, like, 10 to 12 times. <laughs> he, yeah, well, he, he had cheap glasses, though. He had little <laughs> kitty glasses. So, yeah, his 10 glasses made up for that one adult <laughs> pair of glasses. Yeah. Uh, I think he stopped wearing glasses. He had some <laughs> surgery on his eyes, so he ain't got to keep old glasses no more. But, yeah, so maybe that's it. You know, he right. had to come out with these thousands of thousands of dollars, maybe, to pay for that, you know, hundreds of dollars worth of glasses that he broke when he was a child. Right. Mm -hmm. you no, know, no, that's the way it works, though. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Everything that we do, thought, deed, whatever, is a seed. Mm -hmm. Some seeds are good. Some seeds are bad. Mm -hmm. Every one of these bad seeds going to have to be, that we going to have to be pulled out. So that is the importance of an atonement day is because this is a day that's set aside where what happens? 
Well, on this day, the way it's supposed to work is on the memorial of blowing of trumpets, which is the first day of the seventh month, begins what's known as the ten days of awe, mm -hmm. or the ten days of repentance. These are ten days that we're actually supposed to be actively thinking about the things that we have done wrong and trying to repent of those things that we can't. This is ten year, ten days that we're trying to make reconciliation. Mm -hmm. And then on atonement day is when the high priest who goes before the throne and gets us this atonement, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But it's only reserved for those who deserve this atonement. Right. The ones who are arrogant and saying, I, mm. Jesus did away with this and I ain't got a word about this. They have not done the necessary good works, repentance and listening to their charity necessary to cleanse these stains. Yeah. And so that happens every year. But you have to remember there is the prophetic fulfillment of atonement, the big atonement day, mm -hmm. the, the atonement day. That event is coming, you know, sometime in the future here that will be tied with the day of the Lord. Right. So those who don't get this reconciliation over these 10 years of awe will now have to face this atonement day and be reconciled. They chose not to. Um, atone with love and now they have to atone with suffering everything every stain that is on their spirit all of a sudden they're going to have to pay for it on that day mm. on that one day see this this is why this is important is because you know i can go repent of something today i can think of something that i did and i can repent of that thing or I can go do charitable deeds and cover stuff that I can't even think of. Right. Or, you know, but like you said, this elevated law. Mm -hmm. And I have a certain amount of time in order to get this repentance done. But everything that I miss, everything that I forget, everything mm -hmm. that I don't make atonement for will come on me on atonement day mm -hmm. at one time. Mm -hmm. So, you know. It's like, you know, maybe being able to uh somebody stepping on your feet or somebody chopping off your toes so yeah so it's like it's, it, you know you can do the good works you can listen to your conscience and you can uh you know you can seek repentance that's stepping on your toe or because you're still gonna get a little yeah, bit everybody gonna get you a can taste just of say it. the messiah did away with it and i don't have to do anything now you're chopping off and you have to lose your whole foot, foot yeah yeah or your life or everything mm -hmm. because you know some of these people have done so much wrong some of us i ain't gonna try to act like i'm better than nobody right some of us have done so much wrong even mm -hmm. in our past lifetimes mm -hmm. that we just are not going to make enough reconciliation you just not going to do enough charitable deeds to cover all of the bad that you have done in your entire life and their reconciliation will be so severe that it's actually going to take them into the spirit world they're going to right. go away right mm -hmm. and then now they're in that place we call hell because now you are in the spirit world in an area of darkness and confusion and all you have there is your conscience who is now reminding you of all your past deeds. You know, you, you had the chance to make them up for yourself. Mm -hmm. Now your conscience is going to bring it to your attention mm -hmm. and that's going to be painful. And the scripture describes that pain as being like fire on your spirit. Yeah, that's, that's the gonna, fire. That's mm -hmm. going to be hell. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, we got a couple more verses here. Number 10. Of the material offerings which mankind offer me, I only receive the good intention when it is truly good. For an offering does not always represent a noble and elevated intention. So this is, you know, the iodize. Yeah. Iodize, mm -hmm. iodize. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When your mom said, Get, go over there and apologize. Mm -hmm. And you sluggishly walk over there and say, I'm sorry. Don't really mean yeah, it. Yeah, don't even really mean it. He un he knows when you mean it or not. You might yeah. trick me, but you're not going <laughs> to trick him. There are many times when men present me their offerings in order to cover up their wickedness or to demand something in return. That is why I tell you that the gift of peace for the spirit cannot be purchased and its stains cannot be cleansed with material wealth. Even if you could offer me the greatest of material treasures. See, this shit reminds you of when the Messiah went into the temple and he started tossing up the money changers. Mm -hmm. That's what they were doing down there. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't about making a proper repentance 
reconciliation for the faults that you had done what's going on now is you got a person over here selling pigeons and all i need to do is have enough money to buy a pigeon and mm -hmm. i ain't got to worry about it no more right mm -hmm. right yeah I'm, and what about the person who can't afford the pigeon right he's the one that's not getting atonement because he's poor mm -hmm. no it don't really work like that you can't buy your way out of it mm -hmm. when men offer me true repentance sorry for having offended me regeneration correction of their ways restitution for faults committed all with humility that i have taught you then indeed are men presenting me the true offerings of the heart of the spirit and of the mind which are infinitely more pleasing to your father than incense flowers and candles so this is the offering yeah you know this is the offering that he prefers is like you said uh sorrow of having offended him mm -hmm. we offend him when he break when we break the law yes we, we want to act like we don't but mm -hmm. when we when we transgress the law we are offending him mm -hmm. so when we are sorry for that and when we have the regeneration correcting of our ways a true repentance a humble heart humble yeah. heart and doing this all with humility yeah this is an offering mm-hmm this is probably the number one thing that we could do as far as an offering, especially during these days of atonement. Yeah, not going. It's definitely not a, um, a repentance heart when you place it all on the Messiah and leaving yourself to say, well, I ain't got nothing to do that. You know, he did it for me. No, he did not. He did not do it all for you. He did not. He paved the way. He, he was paid, the way. Yes, he showed yes. you how to do it yourself. He was yeah. the way. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. He didn't do it. He didn't do it. He showed you the way. Right. And that's what people need to understand. You know, that's why I said for the 18th time, he was the way. Yes. Mm -hmm. you know, he didn't. He didn't actually make reconciliation. He didn't give you a sin card. Yeah. Well, you, when you think about it, Coach, the people people who say that, even when I said said it you know, before I understood the truth, um, it's because I don't want to truly go and pay for my sins. And you don't. I want somebody else to do it. I don't think either. I don't think I was wrong or I just don't want to do it. And therefore I'm going to pin it all and allow and say that the Messiah did it for me so mm -hmm. that I don't have to, uh, lower my stout heart and do it for myself. Yeah. That's the same car. And, and on top of that, Speaking hypothetically here, of course, you don't want to stop doing the sin. Absolutely. That's Absolutely. the big thing. Yeah, that's the big thing. You yeah, don't want to stop I do sin. not want to stop. I want to do it again. Mm -hmm. And I am going to end up doing it again. And then I am going to say, and well, the Messiah paid it for me. Because you don't want to feel bad for it. Right. And you're going to kill Yeah, so. Yeah. No, I hope you guys got, if you got anything out of this video, is that no? Um, that's not the way it works. Well, before we leave, let's go back to what Paul said. Oh, yeah, that's right. Let's go back and let's look at what Paul said here. Now, we were looking here at Romans chapter 5 and verse 11 on how we received atonement from the Messiah. Mm -hmm. And like we were saying, this is what Paul was talking about. Mm -hmm. And I believe this is what started the confusion. This is the only verse that you find that these two words are included in the same verse. Okay. And so it appears as though Paul is telling us that the Messiah gave us atonement. Yes. So you understand the question then, why do we need atonement? Right. Mm -hmm. But when you start to dig down in this, you start to get the definitions of atonement, which means that what Paul said didn't quite make sense. Yeah. Because there's no way for another man to pay for your sins? No. Mm -mm. He says that, you know, and this is covered in the uh, 66 as well as the Third Testament where it tells us that man has to pay for his own sin. You have to pay for your own sin? Mm -hmm. Well, look at what we find when we look at the interlinear Bible for Romans chapter 5 and verse 11. It doesn't say atonement. Mm -hmm. It says reconciliation. Oh, wow. Right. And then when we click on this, the Strong's number 2643, it says the usage is uh, reconciliation or restoration to favor. Right. Mm -hmm. And this is what we received from the Messiah, because like you said, he showed us the path back to the father. Mm -hmm. Right. Without the Messiah, we was like the Pharisees and the Sadducees, you know, mm -hmm. or we was at least following what they was telling us to do. Yeah. But he showed up and, you know, crashed that whole party. 
with truth yeah. telling us what it was that we was actually supposed to do yeah. in order to get ourselves back to the father's good graces yeah he didn't do it for us you know all that stuff that he told he taught us he did not go in and do that for us why are we thinking that he did this for us he didn't do everything for us he told us what we needed to do to get like you said to get back to the father but he did not uh, complete it himself so it's clear to me that reconciliation and atonement ain't the same thing. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can see how they can be used together. Mm -hmm. But we see here something strange in that when you're looking at the Strong's Concordance usage, it does not even include the word atonement. Yeah. So you wonder, okay, well, where did they get atonement from over here in the KJV version when the Strong's definition never, ever uses atonement when place of reconciliation? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it seems like a translation error or something. Yeah. Somebody took be. some extra liberties there to go from reconciliation to atonement. Yeah. Because now it's got us confused thinking that we don't need to do atonement day. We don't need atonement. Yeah. I mean, Jesus did it all for us. No, you know? he did not. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Well, we hope y'all understood that. And no, he did not. He gave us the way, the path. And we covered it. And we did a video on that, the way. Um, you might guys want to go check that out. The father revealed a lot of information to uh, Stacy and I in that video um, that we believe is supposed to share with all of you guys. So look for a link to that video um, called The Way. And so we can get on this path of reconciliation. Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, as we're in this season here, we need to be thinking about atonement, which yeah. is different. Yeah. Because that's where we got to make up. You need to make up, you mm -hmm. know, and we want this elevated law. So we really need to be looking for charitable deeds. Yes. Repentance mm -hmm. and good works. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. you need to get out there, read Isaiah chapter 58, because that is all covered when he chastises and corrects us on what a true fast looks like. And like I said, we're going to cover that in another video. Mm -hmm. So you guys make sure you subscribe for when that video comes out. Yeah. You can get a link. Yeah, because we're going to be talking about. You know, not necessarily um, fasting for your body, because as I we was mentioning the other day, the fasting for the body is for the, for body. the for the body, which will not leave this 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 planet. Yeah. But we need to be fasting for our spirit well, man. Yeah. Well, that's what we're going to cover in the in yeah. the verse is that it didn't tell us to fast. It told us to afflict our souls, mm -hmm. and we're going to talk about how we have changed or how we came to an understanding that fasting is a way of afflicting your souls. Right. And you're going to find out like in Isaiah 58, that that's an error because like you said, it's not fasting doesn't affect your soul. Mm -mm. You know, if, if, if fasting from food has had a positive effect on your soul, half of us would have starved to death. I know I would have, oh, I would yeah. never eat. Yeah. I would never eat. I know you would. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Eating wouldn't be a part of my life. <laughs> All right, y'all. We're going to close it out there. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Leave us a comment and pray for us. Shalom.